Now let us discuss the second scenario in which the TCP sender has sent the data segment but its ACK has been lost somewhere in the network. Now from the TCP sender perspective whether it is the data segment that has been lost in the network or whether it is the ACK of the data segments which has been lost in the network both the situations make no difference to the TCP sender. In both the scenarios the TCP sender considers it as a segment loss. Now you can see in this example that the ACK has been lost in the network, right? So the TCP sender will continue to wait until the retransmission timer T1 which it set when it sent out the data segment expires. Now you can see that the data segment expires at this point, right? So if the ACK had not received by the TCP sender and RTO timer is expired, the TCP simply retransmit the same segment, right? So this is how TCP retransmits the same segment when the retransmission timer expires and ACK of the same segment do not arrive. If the ACK arrives before the timer expire, the TCP concludes that the segment has been successfully delivered to the receiver and it simply cancels the retransmission timer for that particular segment. So guys, now continuing with the previous lecture, now the question arises that what should be the appropriate value of retransmission timeout? That is for how long the TCP sender should wait for an ACK to arrive. Retransmission timeout cannot be fixed because networks are very dynamic and keep changing over a time, right? Intermediate routers routing TCP segments may be slow or it may be fast or they may get congested for some reason, right? Thus, RTO value needs to be computed by TCP sender dynamically during the course of its operation. And TCP sender has to keep updating the RTO value constantly as per the network latency and depending on various factors. It is important that TCP computes the accurate value of RTO as per the state of the network. If the RTO value is too large, then TCP performance is compromised. And if the RTO value is too less, then, then it will lead TCP to trigger false retransmissions. So let us try to understand these two points with the help of an example. So going forward, so now let us try to understand what will be the problem if TCP sets the value of RTO very large. So let us suppose in this example the TCP sender sends the data segment to the TCP receiver and it starts the retransmission timer T1 of this data segment. This arrow represents the length of duration of this timer. Now let us suppose the acknowledgement that is sent by the TCP receiver is lost somewhere in the network, right? So you can see that at this point of time the acknowledgement has been lost. But TCP sender is still waiting for this acknowledgement to arrive. But since this acknowledgement has already been lost in the network, eventually the retransmission timer will be cancelled and the TCP will send out the same data segment again in the network. So you can see that for this much duration of time, the TCP sender was idle and it was actually not utilizing the network capacity at all. Even if the network was idle and could accommodate more data from the TCP, the TCP sender was not sending any data to the network. The reason being that the TCP sender was waiting for the retransmission timer of the data segment to expire, right? So you can see that this leads to the problem of network underutilization. If the TCP sender wrongly computes the value of RTO and sends it's too large, then it will lead to a problem of network underutilization. Now let us see what will be the problem if the TCP sender sets the value of RTO too short. So you can see the same scenario in which the TCP sender has sent the data segment to the receiver and it starts the retransmission timer of this data segment, right? And you can see that the length of the duration of timer T1 is too short. Now let us suppose that the TCP receiver has received this data segment and it sends out acknowledgement for this data segment. 
Now you can see that maybe because the network is already congested or there is too much traffic on the network, this ACK take a longer time to receive at the sender, right? So you can see that at this point of time, the retransmission timer was already expired and therefore the TCP sender retransmits the same data segment. So this retransmission is actually false retransmission because the data segment was never lost in the network. It's just that its ACK arrived late at the TCP sender. So you can see that if TCP wrongly computes the value of RTO and sets it too short, it will lead to false retransmission of data segments. False retransmission is a situation where data segments are actually not lost in the network but still TCP retransmits those segments because their ACK arrived late. So consider a situation where the network was already congested and TCP further makes the situation even worse by retransmitting the segments which were not actually lost. So too many false retransmission by TCP will only end up in compounding the problem of network congestion. So you can see that computing the accurate value of retransmission timeout is very important for TCP. Computing the value of RTO too long or too short both have its own set of problems.